hey what is up guys and welcome back to the channel so in today's video i'm going to be bringing you my brand new series it is essentially a six round super gt championship all done within gran turismo 7 using official car liveries official cars um, the only downside is that we don't have the full up-to-date roster of um, cars currently in Super GT. Um, so basically what I've done with the more modern GT500 cars, I've put um, up-to-date 2022 liveries on them. Um, some of the older ones I've put like time period correct liveries on. Uh, this is going to be a six round championship and it's basically going to be split into three different categories, fighting it out over six rounds. Um, to see which car comes out on top so the classes are as follows we have gt500 this includes six cars ranging from the most modern cars we have in gt7 to some of the 2008 model gt500 cars then we have the gt500 and uh, slash gt300 classic this features three cars um, this includes the uh, Tom's Castle Supra, the Pennzoil Skyline and the uh, Dai Shin uh, GT300 Silvia. Last off we have the GT300 classes or GT3 spec machines, uh, basically repurposed for this championship, all running official liveries or as up to date as possible. I've had to you know, make a bit of leeway when it comes to them uh, because we don't have you know, all the up to date machines. Uh, so there is some older GT300 machines in there, uh, but they are still modern cars. Um, so you will see things like a high on that Genesis, which I believe was planned to race, but didn't race um, in the end. Um, and like BMW Z4s, etc. So the point scoring system is as follows. So for GT500, there is six cars, which means for first you're going to get 25 points. Second, you're going to get 20 points. Third, you're going to get 15 points. Fourth, 10. Fifth five and six a single point in the gt500 dash gt300 classic there is three cars which means for first you're going to get 25 points second 20 points and third 15 points and the final category the gt300 class there is 11 cars so for first you're going to get 25 points second 20 points third 18 points fourth 15 points fifth 12 points 6th 10 points 7th 8 points 8th 5 points 9th 3 points 10th 2 points and 11th a single point so hopefully over the six rounds in the championship it's going to be quite a close fight we're going to see different mixed up grids and the way i'm going to work it is so whoever wins the class will then get reversed to the back of the grid giving cars that you know have come towards the back each round a better fighting chance um, this basically just keeps um, the championship you know wide open and hopefully improves it and um, keeps it close all the way until the end so we don't just have um, repeat winners uh, obviously I'm going to be taking part I've got to take part to be able to get the uh, replays and the clips uh, and then basically I will go through it pick out my best bits from the championship then we'll go through the results and sort of see where each car stands so with all that being said let me introduce to you the grid so up first we are going to have the gt500 cars then the gt500-300 classic cars then the gt300 class so up first is a car i'll be using to take part in this championship it's the zen liveried um lexus rcf this is the 2022 livery obviously put on the older car Next we have the Nissan GTR, this is a 2016 model but running the current um, up to date livery which is currently on the Z cars which sadly we don't have in this game. Next up is the Red Bull liveried NSX, uh, pretty much looks like the one that is currently racing. Then we have a time period uh, 2008 Calsonic liveried GTR. A 2008 Takata Dome NSX with the 08 livery on it. And then we have the Denso Sard Lexus SC430 running the livery from the uh, correct time and the correct season. So now basically onto the Legends class we have the Pennzoil GT500 Skyline R34 obviously running the 1999 livery in its nice bright yellow. Second we have the Tom's Castrol Supra the number 36 car obviously a Gran Turismo legend and a championship winner. 
And then we have the Daishin um, Nissan Silvia from 1999 in its GT300 livery. So onto the GT300 class, we have the Gainer GTR running a current up-to-date livery. Obviously, sadly, this is a 2013 um, model GT3 GTR. Then we have the K-Tunes um, RCF. This is a 2017 model with a current season livery. Then we have the Supra GT3 running the Green Brave team livery, uh, which is currently being used for the 2022 season. Then we have a classic liveried uh, 2012 liveried um, endless uh, Porsche. Then we have the Z4 running a time period correct livery from 2014. Then we have the car that actually never took part what was supposed to, being a um, Solite Racing um, Hyundai. Then we have the Leon Pyramid liveried AMG GT3. Obviously pretty much been a while, around for a while now. Then we have the Autobax um, Arta Team M6. Obviously a retired car, but this is running the 2018 livery, I believe. Then we have the up-to-date, uh, this is a 2021 model, but running a 2022 uh, BRZ livery, currently taking part in GT300. Then we have the Audi R8, which is, uh, has an up-to-date 2022 livery. And then finally, we have the Lamborghini Huracan running an up-to-date livery, obviously from the Bamboo uh, team. And that concludes your grid. So to start this championship off, we've got the highlights from the GT500. This is obviously the, one of the shorter rounds, being a 70-lap race at the um, Suzuka Short layout. This is the East Circuit, I believe. And on pole, we had the Denso Saad Lexus, followed by the Takata Dome NSX. Then we had the Calsonic GTR, the Red Bull liveried uh, 16 NSX, then we had the Motor liveried GTR followed by the um, Zent Lexus. So as you may have noticed from that clip, the Red Bull Honda NSX made its way up into P3. Obviously here we've got the Zent Lexus making its way up into P5, leaving the 16 Motor GTR uh, basically hanging at the back really, uh, at least for a little while anyway. As we go on to lap two, the Zent Lexus is going to try and make a move on the 08 Calsonic Nissan. And the door's pretty much just closed there as the Calsonic holds on to P4. Eventually though, the move was going to get done and the Calsonic GTR got over talk going on to lap three as the Zent Lexus just goes through. Pretty easy overtake no real worries there and that is up to p4 and two positions gained for the zen uh, lexus as we go on to lap four the uh, red bull nsx is going to manage to make a move on the older nsx that is the takata dome nsx and it's basically the bowel of the nsx is there so on to lap five now and the Zent Lexus is going to make the move on the Takata Dome NSX. It's kind of expected. It's an older machine and it's going to sort of drop off there. But disaster on lap five for both the Red Bull NSX and the Denso Saad Lexus, which obviously held on for quite a, quite a lot longer than I thought it would um, onto the lead. But the NSX has managed to recover and keep the lead. But the Zen Lexus is just going to manage to uh, get the move done nice and cleanly as we go down into turn one for lap six. So on to lap seven now and the lapping starts to begin as it's a GT300 Audi. Uh, basically just sit around at the back. I don't know if it's had an accident or what. Um, but obviously just trying to get the way, you know, get through cleanly. Uh, the majority of the cars are going to manage to do that, but you will see there is a few accidents when it comes to lapping throughout. As on lap 13, the Red Bull NSX manages to just slip um, while it's you know sort of behind traffic and got overtook by the Takata Dome NSX. Um, the Red Bull NSX though is going to manage to try and fight back, and it's going to try and put it up the inside, and it's another <laughs> overtake between both the NSX's. This kind of pretty much happened quite often throughout the first stages of the race. As you can see, the lap traffic's starting to get in the way of some of the GT500s, as the uh, Motor GTR is gonna finally make a move on the uh, Calsonic GTR and the Honda. And it's basically gonna be sort of 
racing as usual with the more modern machines up in the top three and the three older ones are obviously fourth, fifth and sixth. So on to lap 19 now and there's going to be another change for the lead. This time it's the Red Bull NSX finally getting the job done and uh, managing to get up into the lead where it's going to hold off for quite a while up until the first bunch of pit stops. It's going to manage to hold that lead nice and cleanly as we go into lap 22. It's going to finally peel into the pits and this is the first pit stop of any GT500 car in the race. So the Red Bull NSX is going to manage to take um, both tyre change and fuel on board. As you can see it was a pretty decent pit stop. It's quite a lengthy pit stop here at the uh, Suzuka layout. It seems to take a while for the cars to get down into the pit boxes. And then obviously because it, with it being quite such a long race, um, taking fuel on board does take quite a while. The tyres are changed within seconds but then it's pretty much waiting around for the fuel to be put into the car. As uh, the majority of the cars here are just going to fill up full. Um, and hopefully the fuel will take them through to the end. You might may see later on that it's going to be a little bit of a mix up as we also have the older NSX taking its first pit stop around the same time. Again that's going to go for uh, tyres and fuel which means it's going to be sat there for a little while. Um, some cars will basically look like they're going to lap um, some of the pitted cars however obviously when they take the pit stop um, it pretty much nullifies that. As the Red Bull NSX leaves the pits, it's going to uh, end up in P5 with obviously the Takata Dome NSX taking up P6. So another change for the lead as the Meltal uh, GTR is going to make a move all the way around the outside of Turn 1. This is where quite a lot of the overtaking uh, happened in this race. A bit of side-by-side -side action, a little bit of bumping. And it's as if the GT300 GTR knew what was going to go on. and sort of assisted the GTR as that went around and the Lexus got caught up. However, on the same lap, the um, Meltal GTR is going to take its first pit stop of the race basically handing the lead back to uh, the Zen Lexus. So as you may have noted by now, um, basically both Lexus cars haven't pitted yet. Um, it appears like the uh, Hondas are actually worse for tyre wear and fuel usage, followed by the Nissans. And then finally, it will be the Lexuses, uh, which have both yet to pit. As you can see, the Motor GTI is just sat in the pits, as well as the... Um, 08 GTR, the Calsonic livery GTR, which pitted not long after. Obviously you can see a difference in tyre choices for both GTRs. One is running the hards and one is running the mediums. If the uh, 2016 GTR has obviously chosen the hards at the start, that may explain why it had a bit of a, you know, a lack of pace over some of even the older cars and could have managed to get the overtakes done until the pit stops. As the first Lexus is going to go into the pits, that is a Zent car driven by myself um, on lap 25 to get their first pit stop done. Obviously we're going to see where the Nissan comes out and it's going to manage to just keep its lead um, over the Honda, which is a little bit surprising. The Honda seemed quite quick, especially on like overall lap pace. It seemed to really be able to throw the laps in as obviously the Zent Lexus has now taken its first pit stop which has now lost the lead to the older Lexus. So after all that was actually done and the first round of pit stops were finished, the actually it was the Red Bull uh, Honda NSX which managed to keep the lead as the Zent Lexus managed to keep second. The Nissan got its way up to third, followed by the 08 Nissan. And then we obviously have the uh, fifth place Lexus and the Takata Dome NSX in sixth which obviously, you know, a bit of a disappointing race for that. Um, it did seem to sort of hold its own in the first few laps, but it did seem to basically just drop off to the bottom of the field after a while. As you can see, we've got the uh, Calsonic GTR, and then obviously we've got the uh, Denso Sard Lexus, closely followed by the Takata Dome NSX. However, it just seemed like on this track or this layout that the Takata Dome NSX was just sort of stuck at the back like I said um, in P6 found the final spot in GT500. However disaster struck on lap 30 for the Denso Sard Lexus where it just went wide again and it got caught on the gravel and that was it. Um, the Takata Dome NSX did manage to finally make up a position however you may see later that we're all going to be a little bit surprised at what happened. Um, as you can see this car off there um, but the, basically the Zen Lexus is going to manage to get its way up into P1 again as the Red Bull NSX got stuck in a little bit of traffic. 
So the second round of pit stops, it's a little bit more muddled, muddled this time. You're going to see cars pit in uh, with quite a bit of a gap between each other compared to like the first bunch of pit stops. Um, obviously, a few cars on different strategies there. We obviously had the uh, Red Bull Honda pitting in and then we had both GTRs pitting in very similar times yet again. Um, obviously, yeah, I mean, they did it the first time around. Um, Obviously, you can, you can see the Calsonic GTR just pitting in, uh, taking tyres as well. Whereas the uh, Motul GTR just appeared to stay on the hards and just pit in for fuel, really. So it seems like the fuel usage is quite high for them. Lap 52, the Denso Sard is going to pit in from P2. It's going to take new tyres and it's going to take fuel and that will be its final pit stop. It seems to be very good on its tyres and its fuel. Same with the Zen Lexus. Uh, which was obviously driven by myself which i did a big long fuel saving stint on hard tires and i'm just going to fill up enough fuel to really you know get me through to the end of the race you see in the background there you might have spotted the red bull honda um holding on to p2 didn't manage to sort of jump me at the pit stops um i've managed to keep the lead in the zen car so on to lap 65 and that fuel and tire usage is really going to bite the honda um, as it's obviously being caught up here by a bit of lap traffic, obviously not really moving out of the way um, to lay it by. It is quite difficult to sort of let cars by here because it's sort of a quite um, tight layout uh, in comparison to the full track. So it's going to manage to pit in again. It's good, you know, it's quite late on in the race. A bit disappointing that it's had to do that and you will see that it did kind of cost the car um, in the later stages as it pits again just to fuel until the end. So surprisingly, um, obviously the Denso Sard Lexus is going to jump the Honda as you can see it just coming out of the pits there uh, and managed to get P2 it's going to manage to hold on there so even after a couple of spins it's actually done really well especially with it being an older machine to um, end up in P2 running in quite a disappointing fourth place is the 16 GTR as you can see it's going to run into a bit of a nightmare and basically spin allowing the older 08 GTR to come through and take P4 away from it. Quite a disappointing race so far for that um, newer GTR, which you'd really expect to be right up there. However, as you're going to see for their final lap, it was a bit of karma as the Calsonic GTR is going to run into the same issue and just pile into the barrier, handing P4 back to the newer GTR. It looked like a uh, GT300 Lambo as well. However, in the end, it ended up being the Zent Lexus, which managed to hold on a uh, pretty good strategy, I'd say, uh, medium and a hard stint uh, before going back onto the medium tyres and just sprinting to the end, managing to keep uh, take the win in GT500, followed in second by the Denso Sard Lexus, which managed to really hold its own, really, for such an old machine and a few mistakes. Third place, we had the uh, Honda NSX, the Red Bull liveried, more modern version, bit disappointing for them. Uh, it did look like they were going to win at one point. Fourth place, uh, <laughs> disappointing race, I guess, for the GTR. Followed by the 08 GTR in fifth after that mistake in the last corner. And obviously, disappointingly, pretty much nowhere was the Takata Dome NSX after the first few laps. It just seemed to drop back and sort of stay there. So here's the GT500 results and standings after round one. Um, obviously the Zent Lexus taking four points, 425 points to get itself into P1 after round one. Obviously second we have the other Lexus, the Denso So a bit of a surprising one this um, it, for second with 20 points, uh, taking it you know quite well into uh, round two. Third, we have the uh, disappointing result for the Red Bull Honda NSX, taking 15 points. 10 points for fourth place, another disappointing result here for the uh, Motul GTR. Probably not the best result it could really want. Uh, pretty average result, fifth place, five points for the Calsonic GTR. This is an older model. And after a disappointing second stint to the race, the Takata Dome NSX. So let's move on to the GT500-300 Classic um, category. This is obviously the smallest category that I have running in this championship, containing only three cars, but in my opinion, they're absolutely legendary. This is a Tom's Castrol Super, uh, Supra, the Pennzoil Skyline, and a Daishin um, GT300 uh, Nissan Silvia. 
So I didn't really expect much to be going on in this class. I just assumed they'd sort of just run around in the pack somewhere. Uh, but it actually turned out they had a bit of a full-on race. Uh, the Skyline probably having the worst race um, it possibly could. Uh, many, many accidents throughout the whole race for it. As you can see, um, going on to, well, just the end of the first lap, really, it had its first accident and that sort of moved it all the way down the grid as the majority of the GT300 field uh, just ate it up, um, including the Daishin Sylvia, which just, you know, <laughs> surprised to see that sort of chew it up. Um, as expected, though, the Daishin Sylvia did start to drop back Obviously, in GT7, this is actually a GT4 model. Um, well, spec car, should I say. I have allowed it to run upgrades. It's the only car that is allowed. And um, this is just to allow it to be a bit more competitive. Um, I sort of expected it to probably perform a little bit better um, with it being a shorter track. Um, however, it didn't have the best of the best race. It seemed to get caught up in a lot of the uh, issues from the other cars. As you can see, lap five, the uh, Pennzoil skyline is just <laughs> going off track, same place yet again. Um, it did pretty much have a nightmare race here, causing it to lose a lot of places and just a lot of time uh, throughout. So on to lap 10, and it, again, it's the uh, Pennzoil skyline, this time running off in a different place. Uh, just running wide, um, obviously trying to get itself back on track and trying not to sort of drop down um, behind the Daesh and Sylvia. And then obviously I had another off and it was pretty lucky here um, that it managed to slow down the Daesh and Sylvia um, to stop it getting past. However, I do believe on the straight it would have just uh, pulled on it and um, ate it up. As you can see, straight line speed is pretty quick. So we haven't spoke about this car much. Uh, it did have a pretty, uh, pretty good race apart from obviously this off here. On lap 16, it ran well. Um, it kept its own uh, within the GT300 cars as well. Um, it didn't drop back. Um, it just seemed to have a pretty uh, clean race compared to a lot of cars. So on lap 17, we had our first pit stop for this class. Um, it was the Pennzoil Skyline. It did pit. Uh, it did not take tyres, surprisingly enough. It just took fuel. Uh, this did drop it down. But as you'll see, uh, when it comes to the round of pit stops, it's going to sort of uh, move up again. Uh, lap 18, the Tom's Castrol Supra pitted in from the lead of this class and the 11th place overall. Um, it did sort of drop down a bit and again, just going for fuel. And then finally, after quite a long stint on one fuel tank, um, the Daesh and Sylvia pitted and took just fuel. So no tyre changes going on in this class after the first round of pit stops. Daesh and Sylvia seems to be the best on its fuel consumption. So lap 29 now and the Tom's Castrol Super is about to lap the Pennzoil Skyline. Like I said, I mean that Pennzoil Skyline had an absolute nightmare of a round here um, in the opening round. Pretty much got eight up constantly, um, running itself off the track and then obviously costing the Daesh and Sylvia a couple of times as well. Um, and then obviously onto lap 33 and the Tom's Castrol Super just cruising around taking on the dash in um, Sylvia and just lapping it. I believe that may have been the second time it's lapped it. Um, not really much to really say uh, for the dash in Sylvia. It did sort of plod along at the back. Did run into a bit of trouble where it could have maybe made a few overtakes. Um, as you can see, it's then <laughs> the Tom's Castrol Supra's turn to run off and <laughs> the poor dash in Sylvia just getting caught up there. Um, the Supra pretty much getting away with it really, um, not losing too much time. And then on to lap 35, and we've got the Tom's Castrol Supra losing its back end, but then obviously peeling into the pits. At this point, I really did expect it to take tyres, however it didn't. Again, it just pitted for fuel, so it looks like the fuel consumption was quite high on that run. And then on lap 36, we had the uh, Penzo Skyline taking its second pit, and again, not pitting for tyres, just for fuel. So I don't really know what's going on there because it did seem like there was a lack of grip on um, pretty much all these cars, um, especially at this point. Lap 40, the Daesh and Sylvia pitted in. So again, that car is just managing to put in longer runs, which may actually help it throughout this championship. On to lap 47 now, so we are way past the halfway point and again, still running on the same hard tyres as these cars, so it is looking like they may be able to manage it till the end, even with 
you know, lacking a bit of grip on that last corner. It is quite awkward, and especially if they get caught in traffic or anything. Um, it's just pretty much a look at the draw. They do seem to collide into each other quite a bit. Um, it will be fun to see what happens with the GT300 cars because there's a lot of them, um, and they're all pretty similar pace-wise, um, especially on the starting, you know, the first few stints. They do seem to stick together quite quite a lot. Um, as you can see, the Penzoil Skyline, just lap 48, cruising around uh, pretty much on its own at this point. P19 overall, which is quite disappointing. It should really be along, you know, up there with the Tom's Castro Super and having a, yet again another off. So a bit of a nightmare race, like I said. It just seemed to just constantly um, find itself in the barrier of this race. So Daesh and Sylvia pottering around, P20. Um, like I said, I mean, the fuel consumption does seem quite good on that car, and that may help it, um, especially if we do end up doing a few more shorter layouts. So the Tom's Castro Supra did pit in for the last time on lap 52, and again, not taking tyres. So, I mean, these cars must be pretty good on the tyre way, um, just taking on fuel just to get it to the end, and it did in the end manage to uh, complete around 65 laps, which is pretty good. Uh, keeping itself in around about P12 overall, winning the class. And after an absolute nightmare round, the Penzoil Skyline completed around 63 laps at the end. Uh, P19 overall, pretty poor really. Um, I did expect much better, obviously being lapped by the Castro Super, a bit of a kick in the teeth. And obviously bringing up the rear and then last place overall and last place in the class was the uh, GT300 Daesh and Sylvia running into a bit of trouble where it could have really made up some time. So after round one, this is your point standing. It's a Tom's Castro Supra in first with 25 points, managing to take four points in the class. And then in second is a Pennzoil Skyline after it's really disappointing round. And we're still managing to get the 20 points in there though, keeping itself um, in the fight with the Castro Supra into round two. And then obviously last was a Daesh and Sylvia running into a few uh, poor moments there. So up now is our final category, the GT300 category. Obviously these are like GT3 spec cars sort of repurposed for this Super GT series. Um, as you can see we've got the Supra on pole followed by the uh, Mercedes, Lambo, uh, Subaru etc. So let's watch the opening first lap. As you can see, uh, a lot of the uh, GT300 cars are sort of working their way past the classic GT300 Sylvia, moving on up towards the uh, Pennzoil Skyline, which, as you will now know, obviously had a bit of a uh, <laughs> a bit of a nightmare of a race. Uh, overall pace and um, one lap pace, it seemed like the Lamborghini was absolutely the quickest. Um, but it did seem like the Mercedes was also right up there as well as there's a bit of carnage caused by the Skyline on the first lap a lot of cars running wide and obviously the Porsche um, Dropping a few places there dropping back a bit uh, The Lexus did seem very very good on its fuel just like the GT500 counterparts uh, Awesome little car that um, car is it's, well I say little it's a bit of a bit of a chunky beast um, Bit, a bit of a white car to get past really um, it feels a bit like I'd say like the Bentley GT3 uh, really a uh, very wide car uh, very heavy car um, but still holding its own and obviously we have the M6 back there as you just saw which is a bit of a bit of a chunky car uh, that is running the 2018 Autobax livery as you can see the Audi had a bit of a nightmare opening stint multiple offs for it um, as you can see just getting barged there and then only a corner later just spinning around again and getting itself sort of bogged down in the gravel and um, pushing it all the way to the back and by quite a fair fair amount um, you will see that what well, that originally was the first car to get lapped by the GT500 cars only a few laps later. One thing I did notice with the GT300 class, um, although there was you know, quite a lot of chaos um, after pit stops and such, it did seem to settle down for quite a bit. Um, here we have an overtake for the lead. This is the uh, Leon liveried Mercedes getting past the Supra. Obviously the Uric uh, Lamborghini Huracan uh, not far behind. It, like I said, it did seem very quick on the one lap pace. Um, but I overall I expected the AMG GT3 to maybe take this um, a very you know successful car in all different types of GT racing 
big heavy boat like car but very very competitive and pretty much anything it races in the super just looking like it's lacking a bit of pace there as the lamborghini is looking to pounce on it here you can see some of the gt300 machines are just making the way up past the daish and sylvia uh, it did look like he gave it a good knock there and it's dropped it back a bit um this is the lexus obviously i was talking about and then we have the gainer gtr which was quite high up at this point but as you'll see later it did um have a bit of an awful race really another nudge for the poor sylvia and off it goes the z4 getting through with a bit of uh, a bit of door-to-door -door action um up in 13th overall not doing too bad in the class the hyundai also um up there quite a bit then this is where everything started going downhill the gain gtr just piling itself into the barrier getting stuck a bit and you know with the cars all bunched together still at that point losing quite a few places dropping itself down into 19th the supra then just finally ending up in the barrier um it did have pretty much an awful race um as you will see later it started obviously on pole for the gt300s and it just went downhill from there the hyundai next to have a moment at the basically the corner of the death and the z4 also going off didn't manage to lose uh, really any positions there uh, kept itself going uh, holding up a few cars so at this point we have the amg gt3 sort of holding its own this is second in class as it is the first one to pit so the first pit stops of the gt300 class taking part uh, taking place on lap 16 so it's um, not taking tyres, again it's the same as the uh, classic GT500 slash GT300 um, event, none of those took tyres and I don't believe any of the GT300 cars took tyres either, so they were basically just pitting for fuel, so it's pretty cool to see, you know, sort of which cars are going to use the most fuel, it seems like both the German boats are basically using the most fuel um, as pretty much every time there was an order to the pit stops so the order that you're going to see here is pretty much the order throughout um, that the pit stops took place the Lamborghini pitting in from the lead of GT300 on lap 17 so only a lap later like I said very quick on its one lap pace so after the first few pit stops only a lap later pretty much all the GT300 cars appeared to uh, pit so we had this Supra, the BRZ, uh, awesome looking car that is, and the Z4 as well pitting in. There is also the Hyundai in the pits and the Audi R8. Obviously did have a really, really poor start to the race, the Audi. Um, hopefully it's going to try and make a few positions up throughout the uh, race here. So after the first bunch of pit stops, this is how the order was. It was a Lamborghini, then the AMG GT3. The Porsche managing to get itself up there um, in ninth. Really awesome run by that car, especially considering it had a bit of uh, got caught up in some of the carnage at the start. Then we had the Lexus, obviously holding its own, um, pacing pretty well. You know, um, a lot better than I, you know, I kind of thought it would. The Z4, then behind the Lexus, uh, for an older machine, this it was actually quite a quick car down the streets. The M6, the big old boat. Um, just sort of there really it has made a few positions up um, since the start it, it was quite you know down the grid the BRZ sort of just hanging around really it had a pretty quiet race um, up until the end the Hyundai another car that had a pretty uh, quiet and clean race no real massive upsets it didn't it didn't keep going off the track it just pretty much had a couple of offs I believe the Audi R8 obviously starting to make its way back up the grid then we had the Gainer GTR, a uh, pretty poor run by that, and then even worse behind that is the uh, the Supra now at the back of the GT300 class, an absolute shame for that car really. Um, again, it did seem to start out pretty strong, but it just seemed to run into constant issues. I don't know if it was lack of pace or what. So I'm going to go quiet for a bit, and I'm going to let you have a onboard lap with the leading GT300 car. This is a Lamborghini Huracan.
so after the first bunch of pit stops the race did seem to you know settle down and it was pretty much that way um, throughout it was quite a settled race for the gt 300s after you know the big um bunch of drama at the start uh, kind of expected really so it was a lambo and mercedes all taking their pit stops first um obviously the lamborghini leading the way pretty much all the way through again on the same lap was the m6 and obviously the gt3 like you see in there um again no no stopping for tires uh, pretty much throughout it was just fuel so again we're just basically monitoring the uh, fuel consumption on these cars um, it looks like the Lamborghini was just absolutely rapid, um, but using you know quite a bit of fuel. The Porsche again, just having another off. Um, it did sort of get its way back up there, but obviously it's lost a few places there. Um, so we'll hopefully see where that comes through later on. Um, not a bad race really for it. It did seem quite quick on its pace, and it did seem to avoid a lot of accidents. So after the uh, second round of pit stops, this is your order. It was a Lamborghini followed by the Mercedes. A Lamborghini pulling out a huge lead in GT300 at this point. Uh, the Mercedes obviously sort of holding its own but seeming to drop away from the Lamborghini at this point of the race. Bit of a shame for that. The Porsche then managed to get itself back up again after its uh, little off. Uh, running in uh, P9 overall and third in the class. So very good comeback from that car. The Z4 performing very well. Uh, getting past the Lexus up at this point and then obviously after that we're going to have the Lexus which was just sort of there I mean pretty quiet race for that car um, I can't really know any major offs for it then we had the M6 the big old boat uh, obviously retired from GT racing now in this car but yeah it seemed to be pretty much there um, and then we obviously had the BRZ a bit disappointing really I mean for such a quick looking car it was pretty much nowhere Hyundai quiet race uh, pretty much didn't do too much and then the Audi R8 just as you can see getting lapped by the Porsche there and then we had the Supra so a bit of a, a bit of a disappointing race for that like I did say and again the gain of GTR getting caught up in all the mess real disappointment for that car so <laughs> a little bit later the audi after making up some places decided to have another off uh, not really losing too much time there kept itself going uh, didn't really spin around much so a little bit later on in the race a third bunch of pit stops are done so i didn't really want to show them because again it was just stopping for fuel the Lexus catching its back end there, so this is how it stood. It was a Lamborghini, the Lexus, of in you know a pretty quiet race and getting itself up there. Then it was the Porsche, again sort of holding its own, and the Leon uh, liveried Mercedes just dropping back now. So I don't know what happened to its pace there. The M6 uh, making up a few places, so not too bad there. Then we had the Z4, which has pretty much been in the mid pack the whole race. The Hyundai, again sort of holding position. The BRZ sort of there <laughs> uh, the audi r8 and then the gainer gtr so and then obviously followed by the supra having a real poor time of it after that uh, start of the race so coming towards the end of the gt300 race the lamborghini looking like it's uh you know lacking a bit of grip here and maybe it should have pitted for tires um holding its own for the whole race and then it's just going to have an absolute nightmare so this is the last corner of the last lap for it and it's just going to pile itself into the barrier the brz just going straight on and straight into it so at this point the lamborghini just looking like it's got no grip the porsche getting through and the lexus both getting through so that's amazing for the porsche but yeah as you can see the lamborghini just struggling all over absolutely zero grip on them tires so it just seems like tire wear really took its toll on these last few laps for the Lamborghini. It's pace dropping away and then obviously just getting caught up here. And even the AMG GT3 managing to get through. So this is how it ended. We had the Porsche actually taking the win. Pretty much out of nowhere taking the win of the GT300 class. Awesome for that to come back after you know a bit of a rocky start and getting caught up in some trouble. Then we had the Lexus again. Like I said it had a pretty quiet race. Obviously managing to be consistent and get through into P2. Then we had the uh, AMG GT3 managing to get third at the last part of the Lamborghini couldn't get itself going. 
Um, and then obviously, like we said, we had the Lambo. Then we had the M6, the Z4. So both BMWs placing close. Then we had the Hyundai, the BRZ. Uh, pretty much nowhere throughout that whole race, sadly. And then we had the Audi R8 getting it over a couple of positions after that awful start. The Gainer GTR having a real poor race. And then obviously the worst of all, the poor Supra. After starting on pole, dropping all the way down to the back of GT300, getting last place. So after round one, this is going to be your point standings. It's the Porsche out of nowhere taking P1 in the standings of GT300. Then the Lexus, again, Mr. Consistent by the look of it, sort of keeping out of trouble, getting P2. The AMG GT3 managing to jump what looks like its closest rival, that would be in the Huracan after that awful off for it last off. Absolute shame for that, as you can see, here's the Huracan taking 15 points. That would be disappointed with that after leading the majority of GT300. Definitely the quickest car there. Then we have the car that pretty much did make its way up after a bit. That is the M6. So, you know, a pretty decent result for that. I didn't really expect it to be that high up. The Z4 sort of, you know, in the middle of the pack, the whole race really. The Hyundai, again, a pretty quiet race, couple of offs, taking eight points uh, in P7. Then we have the BRZ, again, pretty much nowhere. A bit pretty surprised with the lack of pace of that car, uh, getting eighth place in its class. P9, the Audi, managing to get a couple of uh, positions towards the end there. Uh, pretty decent comeback, I'd say, from the start. The Gainer GTR having an awful race, um, only coming our way with two points. I'd be pretty disappointed in that. So let's see how that does in the next round. And then the worst of all, the Supra dropping from P1 in class to last throughout the race there. Absolute shambles for that car. So here's your overall race results. So this is the whole leaderboard after the race, as you can see. We had the RCF GT500, then the older Lexus GT500, the NSX 2016, the GTR 2016, the GTR 08, the NSX 08, and then we've got the Porsche leading GT300, the RCF GT3, AMG GT3, the Huracan, obviously after that big off on the last corner, the M6 making a few positions up. Then we had the Super GT500 winning the GT500 Dash 300 Classic Class. So, you know, pretty awesome result there. Um, dominated that class really, sort of stayed out of a lot of trouble that, you know, cars such as a Pennzoil got into. So, obviously, here's the uh, bottom half of the leaderboard. So, after the Toyota, we have the Z4. Uh, pretty decent showing for that, the Hyundai, uh, pretty quiet race, a couple of offs but not too much. Then I'd say obviously that one of the biggest disappointments, even though it had a pretty quiet race until the end when it went off, as a BRZ, followed by the R8, the GTR, then the Supra obviously last in GT300, then we had the uh, GT500 Skyline and then the Silvia. So this is going to be the end of the first episode in this series. I actually really enjoyed making these bigger projects using custom races, doing a big Super GT race. Obviously, this is going to be a six-part, uh, well, six-round championship. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy it. I honestly, I loved making this. Like I said, it's sometimes nice to work on bigger projects. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you did like it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, um, just to let me know. Um, really what you thought of it is the only ways i can improve it um i'm hoping to get a few more you know on board shots uh, in the next one um but yeah like i said i mean i loved making it um 100 really really enjoyed it uh, it took around about eight hours in total um to get all this together so that's uh, about 57 minutes for the race uh, and then obviously going through the replays for each class, getting the clips, editing them together. Obviously the intro was a bit longer than it usually would be um, for obviously this uh, race to obviously explain the format and such. So um, the other videos probably won't be as long, but I do like you know making these longer videos. Really enjoyed putting them together. And uh, yeah, 
it was just a little something that I kind of wanted to do um, to really make use of some of the things we have in Gran Turismo 7 that are sort of get underappreciated, like custom races and you know some of the liveries you guys design are absolutely insane. Uh, these inf uh, these official liveries um, pretty much allowing me to do this series. Um, obviously, without them liveries, I won't be able to get the official car or the official looks really uh, together. So yeah, I mean, I did really, like I said, enjoyed making this. And if you guys, you know, liked it, just let me know. Uh, just you know, it'll motivate me to you know pump these out. Yeah, you know, pretty much. Hopefully, on a I'd say probably two weekly basis. Like I said, they take a long time to make, especially when I'm making other content around it, and I'm working a full time job as well. So it's not just YouTube. I do, um, I do still have to pay my bills in other ways. Um, but yeah, I really do enjoy doing YouTube and I'm really happy to be able to kind of make this kind of content for you guys. Hopefully it goes down well. Um, like I said, I mean, around about eight hours work um, as well as working a full-time job just for one video is pretty nuts. Um, but yeah, yeah, honestly, thank you so much for the support that you always give me. Even when, you know, a couple of weeks ago I had a bit of time away, um, you know purely because i was finding it hard to find the time really to do youtube and work full time but i'm you know i've kind of got that under under control now um and obviously i'm back to making videos every day as well as obviously doing bigger projects like this on the side um it's going to be probably a bit difficult to try and find the time to be able to you know make these videos consistently you know sometimes they may be like a week apart two weeks apart but i'm going to try and sort of schedule them in so they're uh, like set times apart but like i said with all that being said that is going to be the end of the video massive thank you thank you so much for watching i'll hopefully see you all in the next one cheers guys